So let's take a look at Sceptile on Smogon. Is it more of a special or physical attacker? Did anyone else not know that Dreadnought is a Shell Smasher? I mean, this is kind of scary to see. This thing, plus a good Terra type, is incredibly threatening. It has the Strong Jaw ability and Swift Swim. I mean, this is a draft menace. Did anybody else not notice how dangerous this thing is? Amnesia Venusaur, that's a two times defense, special defense stat. Kudos to the team builder. My compliments to the chef. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's start with our first replay of the evening. We have Cowboy Swanson versus Haymaker 92. Catch the Rainbow versus Celestelier word I can't say on YouTube. <clears throat> So we have a typical, seemingly pretty typical lineup for Cowboy Swanson with the Dondozo, Magirna, Charizard X, Roaring Moon, and the Frostmoth making its second, third appearance in a row now. Uh, seems like Swanson is starting to lean more towards his Frostmoth. As for the Thunderous, don't think we've seen too much of the Thunderous yet this season, but here it is this week. Uh, not sure who exactly he's trying to counter with it, although the flying typing will be nice in the uh, Sceptile matchup. As for Haymaker, uh, first week with the Bax Caliber recently traded for, so let's see how it plays. He's also bringing Umbreon, who he doesn't play too often, but you know brings here and there. Thunderous for the Palafin, very nice, very nice. So we got the two Ice types leading. The Bax Caliber tries to take that as a chance to go for the Dragon Dance, but then faces a Magirna, who he gets a big Earthquake off. This could be a fast match. Goes into the Unaware Pokemon to neutralize those boosts as he body presses the Umbreon. Which is a very good type advantage. Umbreon gets the Toxic off, which is something you need on the Dondozo, but it has been known to rest. It looks like the Umbreon could lose in this position. As then the critical hit comes and hits the Sceptile, Dondozo is just doing a number on Haymaker's team very early on. Does the Leaf Blade have enough to KO? No, only doing 41% and a dirty Avalanche returning. That's quadruple, four times effective damage. Palafin comes out, switches out, turning into its hero mode as the Dondozo just rests up. Togekiss only doing the the minimal amount of damage. It, it, it looks like Haymaker d just doesn't have the prep for the Dondozo. If, if this is his best option to beat it, this game can be over very quickly. The Heavy Slam comes out doing almost 50%, just not enough to get the two-hit KO. See, what he did here was smart. He could have gone into the Umbreon again and laid another Toxic, but instead, he paralyzed. Now you might think, oh, but he needs the chip to beat the Dondozo. Yes, but it's sleeping it off. What instead Haymaker is going to see the benefit of is the chance to paralyze to prevent him from sleeping and giving him extra turns to damage. I actually agree with this decision to go for a paralysis instead of a toxic here. As he's continuing to draining kiss, get some HP back, but unlucky he doesn't get the full para, which could have saved the game for him. Now he needs to go into the Palafin. Does it have enough damage? He goes for a bulk up. Uh, again, Dondozo has Unaware. So this is not going to have the damage output that it needs. But for some reason, he saves the Dondozo. And that Jet Punch doing only 84%. Palafin just not worried about Frostmoth at all. Two hit KOing, whereas Frostmoth was going to be like a six hit KO. Thunderous comes out. Gets critical hit jet punched, 100% damage. The tables are turning, but that Dondozo is still in the back. The power of that jet punch getting cut in half by the sun and then returning with the solar beam. Somehow, some way, Palafin is here to stay. Doing, surviving the solar beam with just 8% and then finishing the KO. Another jet punch only does 21%. That's now neutral damage. That's now neutral damage cut in half by the sun. No, is that resisted? Yeah, that's resisted damage cut in half by the sun. That was doing nothing. Then the acrobatics doing a measly 14%. 12%. Okay, if that was a roll, the, the Palafin could have even survived that potentially. Skeledurge comes out, eats the crunch, gets a burn down on the elderly dragon. Very, very good. The protosynth... The <laughs> The energy booster then procs after the sun. That is a hilarious interaction. Bax Caliber comes out, maybe going for some sort of dragon dance here. He, he needs a dragon dance here, but he cannot get flinched a second time. The Icicle Spear actually gets revealed. Very good, gets the KO. Now we're in a two on one situation, but does he have 
the power that's needed to break this Don Dozo. This is an incredibly hard position. Don Dozo only has six rests left. So if he can stall it out using um, Toxic and survive these body presses, ooh, he's running out of options. D can Bax Caliber pull through? The Glyav Rush doing 33%. And a, a simple body press loses it. That was a very exciting game, very close. Brings him down to one Pokemon at the very end, just the Don Dozo. I feel like the game was lost very early on. The second he went into the Togekiss as his answer and started draining kissing, I knew the game was lost. Um, I don't know if Haymaker could have played the game differently. What I do know is that if he had prepped differently, I think his odds would have been much better. If we want to take a look at Haymaker's team, uh, who, who does he have available on his team? He has Electros. That could have been good. Yeah, I was thinking a Leaf Storm would have been better as well, and I actually wanted to take a look at the stats. So let's take a look at Sceptile on Smogon. Is it more of a special or physical attacker? See, yeah, the Leaf Blade is only 110. Physical attack stat, right? Physical attack stat, 110. Whereas the Leaf Storm is 145. That is considerably more damage. Now, if we take a look at Don Dozo, let me, let me move this over here for you guys. Don Dozo has 115 defense. Don Dozo only has, <clears throat> excuse me, it only has a, <clears throat> all right, one last try, one last try, and then I'm just going to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Don Dozo has 115 physical defense, but only 65 special defense. As opposed to Sceptile, Mega Sceptile, who has 145 special attack and only 110 physical attack. So that Leaf Blade was doing a quarter of the damage that a Leaf Storm could have done. A Leaf Storm could have one shot of the Don Dozo. And that's what I'm saying when I say that our friend Haymaker here, he really couldn't have played better. He could have built better. And that's how he wins this game. Let's get this rematch underway. Lead Darkrai versus Elite Diancie. Diancie having all the favor here, I'd say. Darkrai reveals Ice Beam, which is a weakness of Amateur's team. As Amateur's decides just to get up some Stealth Rocks and tries to rip a Moonblast, doing 65% damage to Azel, far more damage than I would have expected. The Diamond Storm comes out, KOing the Azelf. Now, Amateur's has a huge lead this matchup. Two times boosted defense stat. He has Stealth Rocks up, and all Dugio has is 14% chip and a light screen on the field. So good luck to everyone in here. Iron Hand comes out, does a fake out, and if you notice, the fake out does 4% health, and the life orb does 16%. He actually takes more damage than he gave for that fake out. The Drain Punch comes out, another Diamond Storm, another defense boost. Diancie seems to be getting really out of control. If this is a body press Diancie, then Dugio could be in real trouble. In fact, it, it probably sweeps this game. The Darkrai falls to the Moonblast. Diancie has picked up two KOs already, doing some serious heavy work. The Dreadnought on the field decides to Shell Smash. Again, if this was a body press, it would have beaten the Dreadnought. It would beat the Darmanitan. It would beat the Darkrai. And it would probably beat the Iron Hands. Ice Fang KOs the Mouscarada. Crunch almost KOs... The Alamola. Did anyone else not know that Dreadnought is a Shell Smasher? I mean, this is kind of scary to see. This thing, plus a good Terra type, is incredibly threatening. It has the Strong Jaw ability and Swift Swim. I mean, this is a Draft Menace. Did anybody else not notice how dangerous this thing is? Liquidation does 32% to an Al Alamola as the Toxic Stall finally takes down the Dreadnought, finally succumbs. Iron Hands hits the field, Alamola protects, not wanting to take that fake out damage, and then simply switches into the Rotom Heat, who gets critted! A critical hit takes down the Rotom Heat, a, sh a staggering amount of damage. The Ice Punch KOs the Garchomp, a little rough skin chip, and a little life orb. Iron Hands is getting chipped down, but Dugio is making a run for it, turning the tables. It's now an even game with both players having three Pokemon left alive. And if you look at who's left, I mean, it's a Darmanitan Galar and an Annihilate. 
versus a Diancy and an Alamola. Now, yes, Naganadel is here, and maybe a, a Choice Scarf set with some beast boosting could do some serious work. But this is, this is out of control. He goes for the Nasty Plot, knowing that it has an Ice Punch. And just an Earthquake gets the KO. Mother of Pearl! Iron Hands is doing all the work. 49%. I feel like it's doing more damage than it did the first time on the field. What is going on? I don't know. How did the Iron Hands is fast? Or was the Garchomp slow? The Drain Punch seems to be doing more and more recovery each and every single turn. I, I guess Alamola has such a huge HP stat that the Drain Punch just keeps giving it. 45% damage is just not enough to KO, to two-hit KO, and let the, the wishes keep coming in. As he calls! Dugio's playing out of his mind. Did you see that play? Let's back that up. He has been Drain Punching this over and over and over again. And on the random turn, he decides, let's mix it up, let's quick Earthquake, is the exact same turn that Amateurs only switches into his Diancie, who would have had neutral damage, is instead taking super effective and getting KO'd. Tyler asks a great question if it's Metronome, which does more damage the more you attack in a row. But no, we've proven that it is a Life Orb Iron Hands. It's just, it seems to, it has the heart of the cards. <laughs> And Dugio refuses to switch and go into potentially a better Pokemon. Instead, is intent on letting the Iron Hands do all the work and finish this game out for him. I'm ready to start skipping turns. And this is just Protect Wish, Protect Wish. Amateurs only is just refusing to lose. See, so he did play with a little bit of strategy there. What he did is he stalled out and let the Life Orb Chip take the Iron Hands allowing him to have a better differential. So now he only loses by two instead of three. He gets the Toxic down on the Annihilate as the Annihilate starts uh, bulk up boosting, doing more damage and taking less damage. Goes for another Toxic as uh, not to waste his Toxics and Wishes. The Drain Punch does 72%. The Wish manages to go off. He's going to protect here. As Dugio calls that with the bulk up. Oh, but he doesn't. For the first time this game, he actually goes on the offensive and clicks liquidation. Now he goes for the protect. This next tick of toxic should kill the annihilate. No, leaves him with 3% left. As the Alamola succumbs to the drain punching. Incredible finish. That was very close. As long as he has, you know, the sauce to deal with this Reggie Gigas, I think Matt has a uh, an incredible matchup. Maybe not an incredible matchup, but this is a winnable game for Matt. I'd like to see how this goes. So the lead Reggie Gigas, how is he going to deal with this and prevent? He's going to start off with the Toxic, which is fantastic. Not letting the Reggie Gigas stay in. Um, now, Tylord has revealed before that he runs Heal Bell on his Ninetales, so he could remove that. But as of right now, I think Matt should count himself very happy to have gotten that Toxic down. Mega Venusaur even getting the Leech Seed in. Just really trying to punish this Regigigas for wanting to stay in and um, getting rid of his slow start. But the Regigigas switches out with 55% HP. If I'm Matt here, I'm not switching. I'm anticipating an Aurora Veil or a Heal Bell and getting a Seed down or something like that. So both players get a layer of screens up as an Aurora Veil versus a Light Screen as the Scizor goes for a Swords Dance versus a Moltres, or as the Moltres comes in. So Matt knows the Moltres is a perfect Scizor counter and is in fact is a great answer to the Volcarona as well. Tries to get the Toxic down, but it's not enough as the Volcarona is now able to just go for the Quiver Dances rent-free. What does he have to answer the Volcarona? The Moltres, shockingly able to survive that hit, then overheats, doing only 7%. Volcarona only takes 12% toxic damage as Ting Lu comes in. Now, this is a good answer here. It's getting two hit KO'd, but it is pushing the Volcarona out, which is very important because that gets rid of those stat bonuses. As the Ampharos is in, and I would count this as a positive matchup for Ting Lu, unless Ampharos has some sort of coverage move, I think uh, there was a... a Signal Beam rumored to be out this week, so let's see if the Signal Beam is revealed. No Signal Beam yet, 
Ninetales on the field as Ting Lu gets up its rocks. I think it's a very wise decision to get up those rocks in this matchup. I think Matt is going to do very well by focusing on his chip damage this week. As I called it, the Ninetales reveals Heal Bell, protecting that Regigigas. Now it's it's been chipped, but it, it's lost its status, as well as the Volcarona. Chipped, but status free. As the screens and the rocks have now been removed, Tylord keeps his Aurora Veil and Volcarona. Hits the field, gets Leech Seated. Let's see what he goes for. He switches out, deciding it's not worth it. As an Amnesia Venusaur is revealed. Now this is saucy. We talk about bringing sauce every week. Have you? I've never seen. I've never seen this set in my life. Amnesia Venusaur. That's a two times defense, special defense stat. Kudos to the team builder. My compliments to the chef. As the Flareon decides, this is my chance. Let's get that Guts Orb up, and he actually manages to force out the Scizor. Flare Blitz is into the Ninetales, doing 80% damage. This is what I'm talking about. Matt is starting to take control of this match. He knows that the Klefki is a positive matchup in the Ninetales situation, gets up his Reflect. I think Matt is playing incredibly well this game. I think, I, I just want to pause here and say, you know, some of the players who have moved up have expressed to me that they aren't happy, that they feel like they're a little outclassed in this upper division. But I think Matt is playing incredibly well and is absolutely proving that he does belong here. Does he go for another Flare Blitz? The Regigigas is revealed. He does go for another Flare Blitz, chipping the Reggie even deeper. As he goes for the Facade, doing a measly 20%. He has not terra the Flareon yet. If I was in this situation, I would be using like a Terra Fire or something to, to boost my damage up higher. Or a Terra Normal to boost the Facade damage. But uh, instead, he goes without Terra Typing this week. We get another Clefki versus Ninetales matchup as Ninetales is just really trying to get a Pain Slit. So it's Defog Scizor. Scizor is revealed again. It's going to be able to possibly remove these spikes as this uh, maybe Leech Seed goes out, All right? Another miss, I believe Matt has missed a couple. He's missed both a Toxic, a Leech Seed, and maybe something else this match, having some poor RNG, as well as having been fully paralyzed at one point. RNG is not on his team, but he's managing to stay in this as Scizor is boosting higher and higher and higher. He gets the Reflect up, and now I, be I bet he goes into the Ting Lu to force this out with a Whirlwind. Does Ting Lu have the tank on his side? No, he does not. He gets bodied. He gets he gets destroyed. <laughs> he's, I mean, he's, he's fucked. He, he got fucked. That's what happened. <laughs> X-Scissor doing the full 58% damage. I wasn't sure if it would be able to do that much to a Ting Lu with a Reflect Up, but it is. As the Bullet Punch crushes the Qian Pao and it all falls down. I think... This game could have played very differently had Matt Way gone for the Flareon uh, earlier, maybe properly used his Terra. I think that Flareon was really pressuring Tylord, and had he used it a little bit better this week, we could have seen a very, very different game. 